All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Lisa Scompiero, and I'm a digital integration specialist, and I'm also a Flipgrid ambassador. Um, so I know a lot about Flipgrid, and um, I did make a few things for distance learning about Flipgrid. I did speak about it in a couple other sessions, but this is a more thorough um, investigation of Flipgrid, letting you play a little bit, letting you see how it works. Um, for Flipgrid, um, they first started Flipgrid as a college um, app that a college professor made. He was trying to find a way to get his t students to talk more back and forth in discussions that were more relevant than just um, doing it in a discussion forum such as Blackboard or something else like that. Uh, once he made it, the students loved it and then he, somebody picked up on it and it sort of went off from there. Flipgrid is completely free. Microsoft bought it a couple years ago, and so it will always be free. Um, they're not going to change that. So whatever I show you, this is all free. Also, if you look in the top right-hand corner, something that I want to remind you is Flipgrid is um, changing some things. Uh, it starts at the August. So just two weeks from now, they'll go ahead and have some major changes, um, but they're not huge changes, but I did wanna share those with you. If you look, um, I will talk about those changes and I will also give you the blog that they have towards the end of the presentation. I'll share this presentation with you guys later, um, just so that you don't have like too many things open. Um, if you're, um, Wondering about Flipgrid, basically this is a, um, a statement from Common Sense Media. It says Flipgrid is a website that allows teachers to create groups to facilitate video discussions. Each group is like a message board where teachers can pose questions, call topics, and their students can post video responses that appear in a tile display. So that is just like a, a very simple way of looking at Flipgrid. Um, and why I highlighted groups and topics here is it used to be grids. Now starting in August, they want to call it groups. So you might notice that if any of you have ever used Flipgrid, you might have to get your mind wrapped around that when they talk about groups, it's just the new word for grids. Um, but topics also I highlighted because now you're going to be able to, with the updates, you can start a topic without making a grid. So whenever I show you guys how to make a grid and a topic, know that sometimes you're going to be able to do a topic on the fly. So let's say you're doing something with students and all of a sudden you're like, Flipgrid would be great for this. I, I'm just going to make a grid, I'm going to make a topic real quick. After August, you're going to be able to jump in, make a topic, and later on, that topic can be added to other classes. So let's say first period, you decide to do a flip grid, um, and you just make it a topic. Later on, you can go in, and then you can add it to your other class periods, to their groups um, that you would have already made for them. So it, it will sort of be like making an assignment in Google Classroom and then assigning it to different groups. Um, another thing that I wanted to share with you is they do have like a small little video. I just want to have you wrap your head around it a little bit before um, I actually have you play with it. So I'm going to just show you this um, video. I'm going to unplug my mic. Alrighty. Well, it's a Monday morning. <laughs> what can we there say? All right. But what I was saying here, if you can hear me now, is, um, you know, with students, they you can set their video response length. It is up to 10 minutes now. Um, during distance learning, they upped it from 5 to 10, and they're probably not going to change it. They're probably going to leave it at 10, they said. Um, students have unlimited retakes. They can flip the camera as well. Some students don't like to show themselves. Usually, I didn't make them just like always show their face. I had them flip it out and show me something, like something they had created. You know, I'd have them use uh, two iPads, like a partner iPad. They would do their Flipgrid, and then the other person would hold for them, and they would show. 
Um, students can personalize their grid images with stickers and drawings if you enable it. And then students can add titles, hashtags, and attachments so they can give you other things and you can add attachments to it as well. So those are some things that are nice because it's just not record a video, record a video. There's other things involved. Um, this is, and I'm going to give you all of this so that you'll have it. This is how you post to a topic. So later on when I give you a topic here, you're going to go to flipgrid.com. You're not going to put this code in right here. Okay, so don't put that code in. Maybe I'll like try to like exit that out so that you don't like do that. Um, but let's make it transparent so you can't see it at all. You go to flipgrid.com and then I'll have the code that I'll give you. And then you'll sign in with Google and you'll tap record. The only difference on an iPad or an iPhone or a um, Android phone would be you download the, the Flipgrid um, from either self-service or your app, you put in the code, and then you tap record, and then you log in with Google. So just sort of flip-flop there between three and four, um, but it's the same. I also want to point something out to you that you're going to be able to see when you get into the grid that I made. There's going to be a little book with a little speaker icon. This is Immersive Reader. This is a free tool that's within Flipgrid and it will actually read anything that you have for the kids in there. So like if you have detailed instructions on what to do, you, they can click that reader icon and it will read it for them. So whenever I send you out to like play, please click on that and see like how it works. Um, so we can talk about it whenever you come back. Also, you can change the speed and the volume by going down to the bottom um, where you have the little icon that is the speaker with the gear next to it. And you can choose the voice selection to be female or male, and then the speed, slow or fast. So for your EL students, I know my EL students, anytime I use like Common Lit or anything that had a reader for it, um, they like to make it slower so that they could listen to it. Um, but then I would have students that would need a reader um, and they would bring it up a little bit but they would still be able to use it because it had that speed thing. So that's very nice to have there. Um, also, it, it has where you can change different co uh, colors and different things for the immersive reader up in the top um, to change like colors and fonts. You might have a kid that um, is dyslexic and so the background would be better in black for them um, and different things like that. It, it will also show syllables. Um, that might be good for some students as well. Um, so they have like different things and they'll, they do have like a little translate thing as well there. So when you post a topic, the first time this comes up, this is actually a lady called Jen Giffen. Um, this is part of her presentation that she shared with all of the ambassadors. Um, and I, I sort of changed it here and there for my purposes. But if you see for number one here, this is how many minutes you'll know you have to record your video. So it will always tell you in the middle how much to record. You can always use this with your students too. So they, when they learn, they know how to do this. I will be sharing this with you. Also for two, um, down here, you're gonna have filters. You're gonna have a whiteboard or blackboard. You're going to be able to add images, uh, draw on that whiteboard or, or blackboard, even draw on your image, um, put in stickers, text, and then right here, this magic ball, you're actually going to be able to have filters so they can do like a, a Minecraft thing where it's all pixelated so you can't see their face um, or um, like a a black and white, but you know, where everything turns black and white. It worked really well for when we did like different moods and tones or different time periods. Like when we did the Great Gatsby ones, um, my kids did like black and white and acted like they were in the 1920s. Um, and then also for here, um, you'll notice for number three at the top here, that's your time countdown. It will sort of let you know how much more time you have. Um, you have a link to any uh, prompt. So if there's anything, you'll be able to click on that and see the links. 
For number five, it's a sticky note that you can actually type everything you want to say and then you look at the sticky note. You can move it anywhere you want to and it's not like you're looking off on a piece of paper. You're looking right at the camera, which on a MacBook is always in the top. Um, so that's, that's one thing to look at. Give me one minute. I just want to make sure. Okay. It says I'm still recording. Um, another thing that um, I wanted to make you guys aware of is you also can down here where it says six, this is where you record. You click this and you'll see it will start to like have a, a button that's flashing. You can also flip the camera on some of the applications. Um, it depends on what device you're on. Um, and then you can also import a video. So you can actually um, make a screencastify and then upload that screencastify as your video for your students. Um, if you want to record something for them on the grid or the group and let them watch that. Um, there's three dots now. I believe if they're to the left. When we get on there, I'll show you. They're not shown here, but they're for screencasting. So if you have used Screencastify, you could also have the kids use um, Flipgrid for screencasting. So if you have an iPad, um, if you're an elementary or middle school or high school that um, is using iPads right now, you might need to um, look at the three dots because you could have your students screencasting, video recording themselves and showing everything, but you would have all the screencasts in one area, which is really nice. Um, and then all you have to do to post it is you can always redo it on the left. Um, that's your little trash can thing. And they'll say, are you sure you want to get rid of that video and redo it? Um, you have the pause recording. So you can pause, think about what you're going to say, start again. And it will almost look seamless. Um, it will just be like a, a quick little like pause. And sometimes you don't even know that somebody paused. And then when you're done recording, you click next. Um, after that, then you can add more. So you can click more to the video if you have time. You can also trim the video. So like if you knew that at the beginning you spent a lot of time, you can do that or you can click next. And then after that, you're going to snap a selfie. Um, this is the one that shows in the grid. Some people like to snap the selfie and then take a sticker and put it over their face. Um, totally acceptable. <laughs> and then also um, you can import an image or select a frame from the video um, uh, by clicking on this as well. Okay. So um, when you post, you can edit your display name. So you can give a video a title. Um, you can add the optional link if enabled. If you notice up here, like for example, when I had students do it, it, it their name came up, whatever their Google ID, their sign in was, their name would come up. Um, most of the time they didn't put a title, but if I asked them to talk about their work, sometimes they put their work in there so that I could see it. Um, so that's just something to, to think about. So I'm going to go back to the chat. I'm going to see um, if there's any questions. So do you guys have any questions? You can unmute yourself or you can uh, put it in the chat right now. I just wanted to pause there for a second because we're not in Flipgrid yet. I just wanted to go over how it looks on the person's end before we actually get there. Lisa. Yes. When, when you assign an assignment and they respond back with Flipgrids, will I have to go into each student's like separate, I don't know how to verbalize this so it makes sense. Like, will all of the flip grids be in one space where I'll see all of their little tiles with all of their pictures? Or will I have to like go into uh, Lisa Scubiero's to get hers and then go into John no. Smith to get his? Yeah, so you'll be able to go into the topic you created and then all the kids are there and it plays one after the other. So like what I used to do is, you know, I, I, when I used to drive from North High to West Virginia, 25 minute drive, if I had, you know, some classes that did a flip grid that day, I would just get the app up on my phone, get the topic up on my phone before I started driving. And then I would just go ahead and click on it and it auto plays, it auto plays the next student. 
So I would listen to all of their responses and get a good up feel for, did they understand the, what we were doing or do I need to go back? Do I mean like I had, I had a mm -hmm. feel for what they knew, but I got, you know, I, I, I got to listen to the groups as, as I went. So it just auto plays for you. Um, yeah, but I'll show you other things, but you can do that. So that's a good question. All right. Um, so I'm going to give you this statistic. So there's two types of people, people who hate their sound of their vo own voice and Morgan Freeman. Uh, so basically, <laughs> everybody hates the sound of their voice. So you are going to get students that are very apprehensive. It seems like um, the younger, they are more willing to do anything. And as you get to high school, which I taught high school, uh, they absolutely like were like, ah, I don't want to talk or I don't want to do this. But I really did see a lot happen with Flipgrid. And I, I just do want to tell you guys, um, one of the, the big accomplishments that I think I had when I started Flipgrid, I started in 2016. Um, I was at the Atlanta uh, NCTE. There was a man that told us that uh, we're going to have you do your response to my session, my, you know, the conference session using Flipgrid. And I was like, what the heck is that? And he gave us the code when it came up and it started um, showing that it was going to record me. I about flipped out. I saw my face and I, I closed my MacBook and I'm like, I'll just do it later. And I went down on the conference room floor. Um, I went ahead and opened up my MacBook. I caught it back up. And at first I was like, well, where the, where's the camera? Where's my eyes going? When I watched my first recording, I'm like, no. 20 recordings later, I felt like it was good, sent it off. And when I brought it back and I showed my students my recording, I said, this took 20 times and it's still not great. I'm saying, um, you know, I say, but I, it was better than what it was before. I told them all my challenges and I let them do a flip grid. And th this was in November, end of November, and there were two kids that hadn't talked since August, since we started school. Both of them were little chatterboxes on there, talking away. I was like, oh my goodness. Um, I had a student that was a select mute my last year of teaching. Um, she would talk sometimes and sometimes not. So on Flipgrid, she told me that she was going to write down her answers on a piece of paper and she was just going to hold it up to the camera. I said, that's fine. Um, then by the end of the year, she was talking in full paragraphs on Flipgrid. And um, a couple years ago, I was at Sheets over by South High and I said, uh, I walked in with my kids and um, I saw the lady that was checking us out was that girl. And she was so like gregarious, um, talkative, just so, so friendly. And I, I was sort of like shocked. And my son said to me, mom, you look so shocked. Why were you so shocked? And I said, I'll tell you when we get out. And my husband, my son said, you know, why were you so shocked, mom? I saw your face. And I said, because this girl never taught and with Flipgrid, she did. Um, so it was just really amazing to see that um, happen with somebody. So what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to put this in the chat. So if you're on a MacBook, I'm just going to give you this and you should be able to go into it. And if you're on an iPad, you might want to use this as well. Um, it will work or you can scan it. And I'm going to go to it so I can show it to you real quick. So this is my group, which will be, it's called a grid now, but it will be called a group. Um, I called it speaking and listening. And I just said, how is speaking and listening incorporated into your curriculum or school? Give one example. Remember to play with the immersive reader. I gave you a tip so that I could give you some suggestions. I also gave you the uh, speaking and listening progressions for Maryland so that you guys could look at that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have you guys mute yourselves. So I'm going to have you play with this and sort of see what you think. Um, in the chat, you can ask me questions or you can just start to ask me questions as you're playing with it. Um, so I'm going to give you some time, let's say 15 minutes. And if in 10 minutes, if you guys feel like, you know, hey, I think we're pretty much done, you can let me know. But 
I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to play. I do want you to try to do a response. And then I am going to have you guys respond to somebody. But we're going to do the responses first. So you can take as many takes as you want. Um, I'm going to mute myself and I am going to watch the chat. Okay, if you got to do your own response, you can go into the grid. You should be able to see everybody's response. And then if you click on somebody, you're going to notice right here off to the left, I'm split screening, so it's really tiny. But you do have this little um, box that looks like a message. When you're on your iPhone or something, you're going to do a text. Same thing, you click on that. And then you can go ahead and record back. Now I see Heather just said something, so let me check here. Uh, Heather says it wouldn't let her record. Heather, what are you using? Um, are you using your MacBook? Your phone, okay. Um, you might have to go into your settings and check Flipgrid and make sure that you have given access to it. Um, so if you go into, that's okay, no problem. If you go into your settings and you should be able to go down to all of your applications. When you find Flipgrid, just make sure the microphone is turned on. It's microphone, camera, and then the Siri and cellular data, but just the microphone and camera, just make sure the microphone's turned on. Um, sometimes it's weird like that, but try to respond to somebody. This is just our little playground that we're doing right now. Um, I'm just giving you a taste of how the students will sort of see it. Um, and I'm going to stop talking so you guys can do some recording. <laughs> okay, so um, any reactions or anything that you'd like to share that you saw whenever you were doing this? I think actually participating in it and doing it today, and I've sat in on Flipgrid um, PD, but actually doing it today makes me far more aware of how easy it is. Yes, and that's why I wanted to do the actual presentation first is because you, you do, like when I did it, I, I felt all that anxiety and the different things so that I knew what my students were going to feel. Do you know what I mean? Like it just made me feel better. So I completely agree that it does take away that unknown factor. And yeah. for you to see, yes, it's going to be very easy for the students to respond. Uh, mm -hmm. Even creating it's going to be pretty easy as well. And I'll show you that as well. But yes, I, I think that's part of it is, and one of the things I suggest um, is to practice. I used to tell my students that um, even whenever I knew I was going to have to make like a talk to somebody or do some sort of speech um, or do some sort of presentation in front of a lot of people, I would make a grid <laughs> for myself and I would get on Flipgrid and see how I looked, how I was talking about things, how I like you know, move my hands like a bazillion times. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, keep your hands down. Quit like flipping your hands all around while you're talking. But it, and as I'm doing it right now, but it's just one of those things that you will notice. Um, you know, it's really great for speaking and just um, practicing, you know, good speech skills. So it's really nice to have that time. So I wanted to give you time. Also, just to see how to respond to others. Um, you can always do it so that it's moderated, and we'll talk about that, where only you can respond to the student, or you can allow them to respond to one another. Um, it's completely up to you and how you're looking at it. Anybody else? Just want to check the chat. I don't think anybody's there. Those are good questions, though, in the chat. So thank you for those. Heather, did, were you at, ever able to record? Can okay, Catherine's saying, can we all see all student responses um, to each other? Okay, um, Heather, we'll try to figure that out um, uh, later and see why it's not working on your phone. It could just be something that where you. Um, 
take off the app and put it back on and see if it just helps with that too. Um, there might've been an update or something that was missed. For Catherine, she says, can we um, see all students' responses to each other? Um, when you go into Flipgrid, and let me just go ahead and minimize this because I was on split screen. Um, when you go into Flipgrid, you're going to see um, up in the corner here, that's what Jeff was talking about. You're going to see that there's responses here. And if I click on somebody, like here's April, I can see her, but I can see that she has two responses here. And if I click on that, I can, I can, I can see their responses as well. So I can see Rebecca responding. Um, so you can always see the person that is speaking and then the response. Um, and you can do that. So it's completely up to you and how you you decide to um, do it, if that helps. And then let me see, I'm gonna try real quick to bring my tab back over here because that's gonna drive me nuts. Um, okay, did that help Catherine? I'm just waiting for her response on there. Oh, she said, yes, thank you. Jamie was saying, I was wondering if students could see responses also. Okay, so that's good that we went over that. I'll have to remember that for the other presentation I'll be doing. So I'm gonna now show you how you would sign up and how you would create a group and everything. I have it on slide 18 down um, in case like you go, I can't remember. I am recording this so that I will send it to you as well, um, but, just so that you always have something. Also, these are great screenshots to show students as well um, for the ones that we had just done. And then for the sign up, this is great for you just to remember. So for 18 um, down, it's more for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to flipgrid.com. Now, when I log in, I've logged in today, so it recognizes me. You will use your Google single sign on. If you notice, I have a bazillion grids, but I use it for a lot of things. If you go to add new grid, that is where you're gonna be able to start it. It eventually will be called a group. So that's why I'm trying to, you know, wrap my head around grids going away, the word grids, and they're making it more group, which I think is more friendly. And I think it's going to make you understand what a grid is. A grid is essentially what's your group. Uh, what is the name of the group that you're going to try to put all your topics in for? Um, so if you go ahead and name it, and I'll just name it, um, you know, Flipgrid Demo, you're going to be able to have them join only using their school email, um, and you could put in the URL. Um, this would be good if you're worried about other people using um, the code or anything like that. Also, um, you can do it where it's a huge educator learning community. So it's a public grid, anybody can get on it. Um, that could be for faculty and other things as well. Um, but for the school email, it might be good because they have to sign in with their Google email. Um, for some students though, they like it just so that it's a public grid because then they can get on with their phones. They'll always give you the code, but it's gonna be available in a, a bunch of places, so you should be fine with that. You'll click Next. Afterwards, um, they're going to tell you that you can have a password that is optional. I find having a password for the Flipgrid because you're gonna have a code that they type in. Um, and then you're gonna give them a password. It just becomes a little too cumbersome. But this would be for your extra um, security uh, for the grid itself and anything that you, like you don't want anybody else to get on the grid. Um, but you can have it moderated so that you don't have to worry about um, students seeing each other's responses until you approve them. Um, you can go to next after that. You can always copy this. You can send it to Google Classroom. Um, you can embed it and get an embed code for it. Um, but most of the time, if you go to your grid, it's still gonna be there. If I go to share, they're gonna give me the same code and I'm gonna find it anytime. And they're gonna give me a QR code that I can just copy um, and put into a slide like I did. 
and you would be able to have the students scan it or you could give them the code um, in Google Classroom or something like that. The first thing that you'll notice is they do give you the option of um, having this right here where it says like say hello on Flipgrid and it it basically has set one up for you. You know, it just says say hello, share a fun fact about yourself and it basically that's all you have to do um, if you want to just have the kids play around with it for the first time. So they create your first topic for you. However, you don't have to stay in that. Um, you can choose that and the actions here. You can hide the topic, you can freeze it, or you can delete the topic, or you can make it activated. So it's completely up to you and how you do it. Um, another thing too is up here for the actions, you can add co-pilots. So if you're co-teaching with somebody, you can add them also so that they can see the grids. You can also duplicate the grid, which is nice whenever you're trying to do something where you're going to do the same thing from class to class. You can duplicate the grid itself. Um, you can get notifications. Um, for the grid notifications, it will ask you how, how you would like to receive your emails. And you can choose like weekly, every new video, never. So you can choose that as well. Um, and then you can also delete the grid if you need to. The code's always here. And what's nice about this right here, if you click on it, you view it as a student. So you get to see how the student will view the grid. Um, that will give you an idea of if you want to change it some way or another so that it would look a little bit different. Um, that's what I sort of did. I kept on going and sort of looking at it and going, is that how I want them to see it for the first time? Um, and I always like click on it to see it. You can also with this pencil, you can edit the grid. So you would go back to what we just did and you would change any other things. Like if you don't want it to be a public grid, you want it to be just by uh, school email, you can go back and edit at any time as well. Um, you will see that all of your topics will be here. Eventually Flipgrid is changing it so that you can do a topic on the fly. So the way that most of us uh, Flipgrid ambassadors are thinking it's gonna look is if I go to my grids, I'm going to probably see add new grid, add new topic. <laughs> and then you would have just a topic floating there. Uh, we're not sure how it might look, but you would then be able to take that topic and put it somewhere else if you wanted to. Um, to go back into here, if I add a new topic, I can just go ahead and um, say um, staff meeting. And then down here, it, for your prompt, you see that you have up to a thousand words. So uh, Lisa Kaiser was asking, is this the only place that you have immersive reader is in your text that you type in? Uh, yes, um, you're not gonna have the immersive reader in like um, docs and different things you bring in. But if you attach a Google doc or a Word document, it has its own readers built into that program when it goes to that different tab or goes to that doc. So they should be okay for those students that use readers. But you can have a pretty detailed prompt here, but you always have to have something. Um, so you could say something like, um, add suggestions for how we can work with students through Meet. And then what you would do is your recording time down here, you have up to 10 minutes, but you can make it 15 seconds. So it depends upon how much time you wanna give students, um, but you can give them a good chunk of time. Just know that some students will take the entire time and some students will be very brief. Um, you might want to say you at least have to be this long, um, you know, and you can put that in your prompt in your directions up here as well. Some, and then if you turn on the video moderation, if I turn this on anytime that I have, and I'll go ahead and turn it on, anytime I have a topic, this little hand will show up to show me it's moderated and that I will have to activate the videos for students to be able to see 
anybody's video. So like I used to do this, especially when I had some little clowns in the class every once in a while, you'd have somebody that you're like, ah, not sure. So you just do video moderation. You make sure that their videos are appropriate. And then you go ahead and you release everybody's videos and then they can watch them and respond. Um, you can also put a recording. So I could, just like we just did the recording, and I'm gonna allow. So you could have your recording right here. It's telling me I have 10 minutes to record. So this is the experience that you guys had. If you notice those three dots right here, that's where you can screencast as well. So I could show you the screen and do everything like that as well. Um, keep in mind that whenever you put a video in here, the kids will be able to watch it, but then you won't be able to add something else. So I'm gonna click out of this. You can also upload a video. So I could have made like a flipped lesson on Screencastify, brought it up into there. I could also give them a YouTube or Vimeo video that I want them to watch first and then respond to it. Um, you can upload images, uh, GIFs, you can add emojis, and then you can add different types of um, information down here, like a, a Google Doc, Microsoft Word. Um, you can do a Kahoot. You can put Wakelet in there, Nearpod. There's like a whole bunch of different ones that will go. So once you add something, then you can go ahead and create your topic, but you can also go to more options. For more options, if you guys notice, I did a topic tip for you guys. I was like, well, maybe they'll have like problems thinking about how speaking and listening is used. So then I went ahead and put, think about debates and speeches. And so I gave you like a topic tip to sort of help you get started. Um, I also gave you a link. That's how I linked it in there. I put a PDF version that was online. Um, it wasn't even in my drive or anything. I just something I found online. I put it there and then I put the title so you knew what it was. Uh, know that you only have 30 words. 30 letters, I mean, for the words um, that you can put for your attachment titles. So you have to be very brief in how you describe it. Um, also, you can put the status. So let's say you do a topic, you've used it for a while, and you just want to sort of freeze it for a while. You could do it where I showed you, but you can also do it here. You can also do launch and freeze dates. So you can do this, this grid is going to, or this topic is going to be open from this date to this date, and then it's going to be closed and it's going to be frozen so that you can't, you know, respond to it any longer. So you can do that as well. And then down here, you have some options. You can do selfies and videos. Do you allow them to do that? Um, I sometimes would turn off likes for students and I turned it off for you guys as well, just because I found students were really into that. Um, we did a thing with a group of, um, it was a, a teacher from South Africa. They were way different time zone wise than us. So we use Flipgrid for the students to talk to one another. Um, they were so much into the likes and stuff that we decided just to turn it off. Uh, we let them do student to student replies, but we didn't want them to be so consumed by likes uh, with social media and different things like that. Also, you can do feedback. You can just have ideas and performance, but you can also have custom feedback. It saves everything that you use. So I had this for our manifesto. And if I choose it, then I can also edit it if I want to. And I can give them the score, the minimum, the maximum, and put the criteria that is expected for the rubric. Um, so you have all those different options as well. And then you can create the topic. It will give you a code as well as a QR code. And then you can have that go to Google Classroom um, or you can embed it. And then whenever I go back, this is my topic. But if I go to Flipgrid demo, now I have the staff meeting one. As you see, it has a little hand for the moderation. And then I have the um, say hello on Flipgrid. So I have both of those there. Um, and if I was gonna go in and look as a student, I would see um, both of them right here at the top. 
I would see staff meeting and then I would say, say hello on Flipgrid. So the great thing about putting in a GIF or something is you're going to be able to um, spot it a little bit better. Um, so that might be an organizational thing that you might want to have in there. I'm gonna see if there's any questions. So is there an organized way easy to navigate for students of responding back and forth after a peer replies to your initial response so that they could go further with the discussion thread? Um, I have, Samantha, I've had people, um, a lot of students do this where they go back and forth for quite some time and it doesn't seem to bother them to go through um, either on the iPad, on their phone, on a Chromebook, I've watched them too. Um, it seems like they're pretty savvy, the kids, and they can negotiate it just like they negotiate TikTok or anything else. Um, they go back and forth between um, and reply to one another, and they go back to it often. Uh, for that South African one, they went back a lot because they wanted to see if any other, anybody else responded to what they were saying or what they responded to. So they kept on going back and forth. Um, so yeah, I would say, it, it, it seems for us maybe not so, but the kids seem pretty savvy with it um, and it doesn't seem to affect them as much um, when I've seen them do it. Um, any other questions? I just want to make sure. And Sam, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Um, and so the I just want to make sure. So we've gone through that, creating a group and um, editing the group, your co-pilots, okay, adding the topics, and then uh, you can edit the topics as well. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm on, on point where I am supposed to be. Um, whenever you are in your Flipgrid right here, this is your group of, you know, your group, which is your Flipgrid demo. And then you have your two things down here and you can have all of your information. Um, what's nice is if I go back to all my grids, and let me say I go down here to testing because I know I have an actual video um, and I'm gonna pause it, but I have this video. I already made some feedback here, but I'm gonna go ahead and trash it so that um, I can show it to you again. But you can do video feedback. Something that Lindsay was asking is you do the video feedback. So, you know, you go in, you do your feedback, you talk to the student, you show them everything that you're supposed to do. You you grade the rubric, you put in comments, and she said, is there another way to email the feed? Because you can't really email from here. Um, you can copy the feedback link, Lindsay, it's right here. You'll copy it, and then what I normally would do is I would just put it into Google Classroom, because most of the time in Google Classroom, I put, um, the assignment for Flipgrid or whatever the assignment was that had Flipgrid embedded in it, I put that in there and I gave it to the student. Um, and then I would just, in their grade that I put in Google Classroom um, for the actual assignment, I, in, as part of the comment, I gave them the share uh, of the feedback thing as well. Um, another thing is you could share it, you could do a QR code, or you could just copy it and give it to them. You could also share it to Google Classroom. So if you share it to Google Classroom, it will come up just like this. You'll choose the group, you'll choose the action, and then once you do that, you'll go to it and then you can choose the student and you can send it to them that way as well. So it's not like copying and then going, it will actually take you to Google Classroom and you can do it like that. Um, so I hope that helped as well. Um, another thing to be aware of is what's up here. So they'll always like send you what your activity is. They'll tell you how many days and hours of engagement you've had on your grids, um, how many videos you've had, um, how many views, um, they'll give you different badges for different things that you do. Also, if you look for your grids, you'll be able to see your grids. They do have something called mixtapes, and it's a place to like showcase your student videos. You create a mixtape and you add videos from any topic to build your custom playlist. So you can actually like build all kinds of like, you know, um, 
videos. I this happened after I um, left the classroom, but I did do something like this before they had mixtapes. I would take some of their responses and I would put them all together and record them using QuickTime so they could see all of their responses all together. So Sam, that might be another way that they could all see their responses afterwards um, all together. Um, also grid pals. Um, this is something where you can go and see all the different places by grade subjects that you could actually, um, it's almost like if you've ever done the Skype in the classroom and you find another class and you Skype with them, you're just gonna find another uh, class somewhere in the world, um, in the United States, and you can be grid pals with them. And instead of pen pals, you're actually gonna be grid pals with them and talk with them. Um, also, there's a discovery library. It says disco library. And I always think that, you know, they're gonna have some music in there um, and they might, uh, but they can do all kinds of different um, types of things. If you see at the top, they have a lot of different um, conversations going on at the top that you can go through and see what they have for that. They also have uh, weekly hits, like ones that have been hit the most. And then they also have some other ones here, but they also have them from educators. Um, I'm actually in here because as an ambassador, you have to do so many. Um, so if I just go ahead and I search myself, just so that you could see you can share playlists in here. Um, you're gonna see different ones that I shared in here. Um, and they're mostly English secondary, but you'll be able to look at those. Once you open up any of them, um, you can then copy them and you can actually um, use them. So I've had some people like, I've had a lot of people take the Socratic Smackdown one and they've either used it or they've said it's their favorite. Um, so you can do different ones, but you can share them. Um, that does help you um, if you want to be like Flipgrid certified or something like that, that does help. But the Disco Library is really neat because it gives you some ideas on what you could do. And then Shorts allows you to use the Power Flipgrid's camera to easily share quick videos with anyone anywhere. So that when you record a short, it's just a quick, fun video that you're going to record out and then you're gonna have a code and you're gonna send it out. So this would be like a quick, um, this could be for like a um, substitute plan or something like that, it's just something real quick that you want to record. And um, it would almost be like the topic thing that they were talking about. You don't have to create a topic. This could be for whenever I wanted to, um, I always made a, a group or a grid and then a topic. And then I had to uh, record myself like practicing. I could do this to sort of practice, um, you know, me speaking in front of somebody if I had to do anything in front of people. Um, because I am introverted and extroverted. So it's really nice for me to sometimes do that and uh, just feel a little bit more confident in what I'm doing. So are there any questions right now? And okay, thank you, Lindsay. I'm glad that that helped. Um, I just wanted to make sure I showed that. Also in the presentation, um, let me see, I'm gonna go here. Also, um, you can like the, you can click on the person's name to give feedback. You saw that, but you can also have guest mode. So you can share a topic with like families, but only that topic will be shared. So you would say that you would want to add um, a topic guest, and then you would put it in guest mode. Um, and then either they could record or not. So it depends on how you wanna do that with families. Um, that would be your choice. These are some things that they talk about that you could use Flipgrid for. If you go to that disco library, you're gonna notice that there are so many, like for all kinds of different things. I've seen it used so much in so many different ways. Um, I actually gave uh, Jessica Reynolds at BISFA the idea. I saw somebody on Twitter was using this to make, um, uh, if you ever saw The Masked Singer, they were having music classes during distance learning, do The Masked Singer. And so she did it with her students. And all they did was they put a sticky over their face and they sang 
um, a song that they traditionally didn't sing and they had to decide who it was. Um, so it was really neat for them to like go back and forth and talk about what they heard in the person's like voice and inflection and different things like that. And of, of course, other musical terms, but she turned it into a, a pretty incredible lesson. So there's all kinds of different things you can do. Um, you know, like I said, like I shared some on there, you're going to see other people share. Um, some of them are going to be, you know, uh, very easy going lessons and other ones are going to be more thought provoking. I know my main thing is whenever I first started Flipgrid, I made it so that um, it was engaging. Um, but it was also something that gave them a choice. So maybe sometimes at the end of a hyperdoc, I would say, um, go on to Flipgrid and do this or create an iMovie. Uh, both of them did the same thing. It just, you know, depended upon the student and what they wanted to do. Um, it also gave me an opportunity for me to see what their choices were, but also not to see 132 of the same thing. Um, I saw some, you know, originality. I saw some different things happening um, by looking at it. I'm also going to share these resources with you. Just going to go over them briefly so that you know um, what you're looking at. So um, Flipgrid has a community on Twitter um, and you can go ahead and follow them. They also do the hashtag Flipgrid Fever. But if you tweet something out today to Flipgrid and you know tell them that you were in a PD or blah, 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 they will like respond to you um, immediately <laughs> within the day. Um, and it's really nice because they are really for the teachers. Um, this one right here in the middle, I did put a big circle around it. This is a free course that you can take. Um, I just got the Chromebook Infused Classroom. This lady does um, Infused Classroom um, books, but she's doing a free mastering Flipgrid in five easy steps. Um, I took it just to see like, you know, how it was. And what I liked about it is how she talked about like Flipgrid and generation, generation G Z um, and, you know, just different types of things she talked about in there. So um, I would suggest to take it. I think it's really um, a good one to, to look at. Um, they do have a blog. This will have um, all the updates. So they always have a spotlight educator um, in there. I was one once, um, which was humbling. Um, but down here, they had Flipgrid uh, live on June 29th um, and I, for an hour, and I watched it. And they'll, you can check out the full live broadcast, but you can also see all the highlights how the camera's gonna be a little bit different. They're gonna have more stickers. They're gonna have backgrounds like graph paper, dotted paper. They ha they're gonna have different fonts. Um, they're also going to have some different uh, looks to the topics um, and the dashboard and different things like that. And so all of that's gonna be in there. Um, they're also doing some stuff through the Langston League and made by Dyslexia and they're partnering partnering with them. So that's some exciting stuff to look at. So you can read through that stuff and see, but that's going to be happening in August. This is their help section here. Um, and then the integration docs, if you click on that, they'll go ahead and go over different ways to integrate Flipgrid and they'll do it by subject and they'll do it by grade so that whenever you click on it, like pre-K, you can see all the different ways that they're thinking about using it. Um, and they give you some examples here of people that have used it. Um, so those are really nice to look at the integration docs as well. Um, they also have some webinars. They always offer webinars. So you can always go down and see the different um, people that have responded. But as you go down, you'll see these are, um, you know, people that have, um, you know, integrated uh, Flipgrid in different ways so that you can watch that as well. Right here, this is a PD module that I made for distance learning. It has written directions as well as creating a grid. I forget who said it when I sent out the um, Google form, but somebody said that they, um, 
uh, would like directions for students. So down here, if you look at the bottom, after the directions, the written directions, and the videos on how to do everything here, um, you will notice that you have um, where it says uh, editable PDF letter for students. If you click on that, this is a, a letter that you can um, use. And if you know how to use Kami, you can even edit it even better. But you would enter your Flipgrid code here. You could also just take screenshots of this and put it into a Google slide. And then they could scan their QR code. But it explains to them how to record it. And again, you might want to pair that with the directions I had at the top here, whether the students are going to be using a Chromebook or if they're going to be using an iPad um, so that you could have those two options. But that was something that I noticed somebody had said and I wanted to point out. Um, so you are going to have a lot of resources here. Another resource is um, this is actually the fourth version. I'm sure another one's gonna be coming out soon. So be aware of that, like look for it. I'll try to update this um, once it does come out. Usually when there's updates, um, it takes them a while to update it. But if you click on it, you're gonna be able to see that they made a little book. Um, and if you go through the book, it just shows you what Flipgrid is. It has the whole Flipgrid lingo. Um, it goes over everything for you. Um, and then it goes over how to create your account. So these are things you can use with students as well if you want to. It has a lot of screenshots and different things like that as well. And it's a very comprehensive book. It's added to, they have different versions that come out and they have it in different languages as well. So it's translated in several languages in case you need it um, for someone else um, in, a, in a different language. It would be in a different language for them as well. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the chat. Um, okay, Sam says she loves a direction sheet and resources. Oh, I love to share, you know me. Uh, <laughs> um, any other questions that you guys have? I originally was just asking about the length of time for okay. the responses, um, but then you were going to sh show us how you can screencast in Flipgrid because it's longer. Thank than you. Time. Thank you. I don't know. I just like blanked out there for a minute. All right. And then I'm going to go down here, I'm trying to think where that's at. I'm going to just start a new topic because I'm, I'm, Going down here, so if I was going to um, record a video right here, down by the three dots, when I go to screen recording, if I click on this, and I hope it shows it, I hope I don't get kicked off, it's gonna say start screen recording. It's gonna give me a three, two, one, just like Screencastify. But I, I want you guys to be aware, then you're gonna sit there and go, just like on the iPads when you would screencast, where do I go? It's all blurry. You actually have to go to a tab and start showing the students whatever you wanna show them. Or, you know, go back into Flipgrid and use your whiteboard or whatever and show them. So you would do where, wherever you want to go and show them. If I wanna show you all the tabs up here, after I start my screen recording, then I would have that 10 minutes to screen record. So you would have that option. Okay. And then uh, Jeff says, as a music teacher, I could see the benefit for students who are nervous to sing or perform in front of others. I would still want them to perform, but this is a great way to ease them into performing. And Jeff, I would say what's great too is as a teacher, music teacher, you can moderate it so that students not, doesn't, don't necessarily need to see each other. I know that during the West Virginia strike a couple years ago, my son for viola, he actually, his teacher had to play every night and, and practice. And then she, you know, responded back to them and she would play her viola and say certain things, but nobody else could see it. So my son was more apt to do it because the teacher was only seeing it and it wasn't the students. And then every once in a while she would say, may I share yours with everybody in Google Classroom because I want to show them that they should do this. And I'm only gonna show this part of your video. So sometimes she would do that. 
Um, so that might be good to do too. And then Catherine said, uh, when video moderation is on, does that also allow you to approve students' responses to each other before they are posted? I believe so. When video moderation is on, then you moderate every video that comes in. Um, when I used it before, I, I would get a bazillion emails, but I wanted them to know who was posting and responding back because sometimes they responded at 11 o'clock at night to each other. Um, then that morning I was able to see those responses and either approve them or just n not approve them. Um, so yes, um, from what I recall, yes, you can do that. Any other questions? So I am going to share this um, presentation with you guys. I'm going to share it via an email today, but I'm also going to put it in the chat so that people want to um, move on to other things they can and uh, especially go to those resources at the end. Um, my vision for this course was to do what I just did with you guys, but then also give you time to go to these resources on 50 and 51 to really like, decide like how are you going to use it and you know I would love to have you share out you know with me how you how you're envisioning how to use it as well um, you know it's not required but I, I definitely would love to hear some of the ways that you're going to use it but I think you know it's such a robust program and there's a lot of things with uh, Flipgrid that you're going to notice that they they have a lot of great ideas in it um, that you, you're going to find that it's not just going to be, you know, a quick little response. It is going to fit into um, what you're teaching. And the, the reason I asked that question about speaking and listening, I always felt like I was doing such like a bad job of speaking and listening when I would look at it on the curriculum. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I really don't teach it the way that I think it should be taught. But when I started using Flipgrid, I really felt like, yes, this is how speaking and listening should be taught. It, it's, it's, it's making more sense to me now. Um, so I did like that a lot. Um, it, it made me feel like I was teaching those skills to the students and I, w a lot, I, I saw the students grow both as a speaker as well as a listener. Um, and something that I would do is save those grids or groups from the year before. Um, I used to have to teach literary analysis for the MCAP and I would have students do a flip grid and tell me what literary analysis was and what it was not. Um, and they would do a little flip grid on it. And then the following year, I would show that to the next group and they would be like hanging on to these videos because of course these are the upperclassmen now. This is, you know, the people that they know at the school, but they would just literally love to hear what they had to say. And I could have told them what literary analysis was until I was blue in my face. But just to hear, you know, the guy, you know, that plays on the football team say what literary analysis is, um, you know, they were like, I finally get it. And I was like, oh, my goodness gracious. But it is true that they do like to hear from one another. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, access denied. What? Well, let me go to share and let me, well, of course, I just love this new. So I'm going to put. Washington County Public Schools, and then you can go ahead and um, do that. Jamie says, we were just talking about the same thing about speaking and listening aspect in another PD recently, and Flipgrid seems like a great way to meet those standards. And I would say, Jamie, without a doubt, I just felt so much better about myself teaching, speaking, and listening once I had the students actually speaking and listening. And this application allowed them to do that, and I found many dynamic ways that it really brought out some of those kids that were nervous to talk. They actually became more um, vocal in the classroom too because they had that practice on Flipgrid. And I mean, sometimes I would listen to their response that was like maybe three minutes long, but they could have taken a good 20 minutes to do that response, but I wouldn't have known it, but they would have 
And they would have known that it took me 20 takes, you know, for my first response, but it gave them the confidence by restating and listening to themselves and listening to themselves after they did it, um, that they were very critical of what they gave me. Um, so I found that to be very um, nice as well. And there were all kinds of ways that um, I've seen teachers use it. So I think you're going to find a, a plethora of them on the uh, Disco Library as well. Okay, any other questions? And Jeff, can you access this now? There's no access denied. <laughs> So sorry about that. I check that on everything. So I can get it now. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. All right. So I know we have a half hour to go, but my vision was for you to go out and explore, for you guys to play, to sort of see if you wanted to do anything else with it. I can stay for the whole half hour and answer questions. Um, and I can always, you know, um, email with you later on if you have questions. Um, and we can meet up um, if you have any other questions. But I, I hope that this helped. I hope it gave you some, um, some ideas, but also some ways that you could use Flipgrid, but you could also introduce it to your students. Let them see that it is something that um, they might feel a little bit vulnerable with, um, but it actually helps you with those vulnerabilities later. Um, so it is a, a very nice program, I, I would say, for anybody that wants to have the students really share their voice um, and, and give them that ability to come up with ways. I, I always found Flipgrid also, whatever prompt I had, students were able with Flipgrid, because it was speaking, they were able to sort of um, have some choice in it. And you got to see different takes on it, and it was very nice. Um, so um, I hope you see that as well. So if you don't have questions, you're free to go. I took roll um, while you guys were doing your stuff. Um, and then Jeff said, what is the youngest grade you guys think could handle Flipgrid? Um, you saw that they have from pre-K up to adult. Um, so I think they think anybody can. Uh, you will notice that whenever you get a student response, um, they have a QR um, reader that it says it's um, AR. You can actually take that QR code and print it out. and. Uh, like, for example, if you have like um, artwork or something that the kid has done, you can put that AR code on the corner of their work, set it home, and their parents can just scan it. And it comes up like the kid's right in front of you. It just like comes up right up off of the paper. Um, so you can do that. Um, so I, I would say, Jeff, I think any kids can handle it. And I think Flipgrid can be on those iPads that are um, the, new, the, the like first generation ones that we have. I think that they still are on there. I know everybody's so excited about getting into those integration docs. They are really nice. And then uh, Michelle said her fourth grade class used it during distance learning. Michelle, would you say that you think younger could actually handle it? Absolutely. My students really loved it. And they would ask if they could make multiple videos. Um, so they really enjoyed using it. Yeah, I would tell you, I do remember when I used Flipgrid, the one time um, I had a an avid teacher across the hallway, um, Mr. Swartz, he used it and he wanted the faculty to give college advice to the students. And so I would, came home and on the weekend, I was giving college advice. And my daughter at the time was five years old. She came over next to me and she said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm giving college advice to the, the students for a class. And she said, can I do it? And I said, sure. And I thought, I'll just go in and tell, you know, Nate to erase it. Well, she went on for a good three minutes telling them, you know, that she, you know, hopes that they study really hard and they don't, I mean, she was very good. And she, I mean, five years old and she was just rambling off and 
going and I, I went in and told him, he's like, actually, I'm going to keep it on there. He goes, she has some good advice. So, <laughs> you know, a five-year-old telling kids that are seniors what they should do in college. Uh, but it, it worked. So I would say they, you know, with some help maybe from the very beginning, because I had to show her where to record and stuff. But after a while, she was right on it. She liked and She wanted to always do the videos. Can we make another video? <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, so they, I think they do like it. So any other questions? Lisa, you said that you used the um, the one feature where you could actually do the grid pals. Mm -hmm. Is that available? I'm just thinking about my personal and professional skills class and the need to have global context. Is that also available for schools in other countries? Or is Flipgrid primarily American or? No, it's all different countries as well. And like I said, you know, like I, I connected with a teacher in South Africa. We were talking to kids about poetry and he showed a South African yeah, poem. South Africa. Okay. Yeah. I yeah so from South Africa. Oh, okay. no, they were in South Africa and so were his mm -hmm. students. And see, the reason why we couldn't like Skype or hang out is because they were so many hours behind. Like when we were in school, they were sleeping and, and vice versa. So we did Flipgrid to make up for that. And it was really nice because like the students felt like these kids. And it was funny because I was teaching 10th grade and his kids were eighth graders, but they still jived and connected and, and they liked um, hearing about each other's cultures. And some of my kids were really, um, you know, worried about like, they started to actually uh, look up some stuff about South Africa and they were really worried about, um, you know, their lack of water and different things like that. So they were really getting into the whole aspect of talking to somebody in another country. Um, they were trying to learn about that country. And then uh, Lisa says, I helped kindergarten students record a video and shared the grid with their parents. So yeah, I mean, I've seen really young. Uh, Sam says, my daughter has used it since first grade in many of her classes and loves it. So I would say, you know, kids, kids like to use it at any age um, and it is very simple to use. But yeah, the grid pals, I'd really look into Kim because you know you find some people, make some connections. A lot of the people are on Twitter too, and you can always you know follow them and then you know back channel with them and talk with them. Um, that's what I did with the one gentleman, um, so that we could figure out because we were using Go Formative as well, like we were making formatives, which was interesting too because the students actually got to see how a teacher makes a different type of assessment compared to mine. He made an assessment for my students and I made an assessment for my his students. And then they took it and it was like they had to read the poem and then talk about what they saw in it and stuff like that. So it was really neat because we were having them see how things were set up as well. Um, and a lot of kids commented on, oh, this is very different. You know, I liked how this question was phrased. So they started to all, you know, also see how things were um, set up from country to country and teacher to teacher. <laughs> is this something that um, people in the workforce can access or is it like a paid program that Washington County is paying for? No, it's not paid. It's free for everyone of every, um, I actually use this when my dad turned uh, 70 um, we could, well, no, when we, he turned 70, we had a big thing, but when he turned 75, um, I made a flip grid and I had, um, all kinds of people respond to it from, because like we, we couldn't have everybody meet and they actually responded like all my cousins, his brothers, his sisters, they all got on Flipgrid and they were like, you know, happy birthday. Yeah, um, cool. I've used it for church, for vacation Bible school, for like kids to respond of what's your favorite thing about vacation Bible school and then give it to the pastor and his wife at the end so that they can access it and see all the kids talking about what they love. Um, so you can use it for not just, you know, um, the, 
educational aspect, you can use it for other things as well. You know, when you can't, like it's really great for this time too, when people can't really get together or go somewhere, they might still be able to create a grid and talk to one another. Um, like a brainstorming session type of thing. We've used it for that as ambassadors. Everybody get on, talk about what you're planning on doing, and then we watch each other's videos and respond. My thought was maybe I could use it for hospitality and tourism and have the people at the hotel, since I'm not going to be able to do field trips, have the people at the hotel provide information for the kids, you know, like verbally that they could then respond back to. Oh, that would be great. And the kids mm -hmm. could ask questions and different things like that, and then they could mm -hmm. see those. That would be really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, you know, the, it's really limitless. Um, and again, it's always going to be free. Um, somebody asked them that on Twitter a couple weeks ago. They were like, hey, Flipgrid, whenever distance learning is over, what are you going to do? How much is Flipgrid going to cost? And they're like, it's free forever. Like, <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. Um, because Microsoft bought them. They just basically, you know, left it like that. Um, so don't worry, you know, it's always going to be free, they said. And what's nice about it is it, it, it does evolve. They keep on trying to build on it and make it better um, and make it more, you know, um, inclusive for everybody. And they have all kinds of countries represented. Um, it's just a really neat community to like follow and be part of. You'll notice that they're, they're very active. Um, they, they listen to educators. If educators go, can't you do this? They're like, yeah, we're gonna try it. <laughs> they're very good about that. All right, so any other questions or comments? Otherwise, you're free to go. Um, I'm sorry I, I didn't talk for the whole two hours, <laughs> but I wanted to give you guys time to go and explore because I know sometimes whenever you're at a session and it lasts the full two hours, you only allotted that two hour time and then you have to go on to something else. So I wanted to give you time to go explore if you need that time. So you're more than welcome to leave, but you can also ask questions. And you're welcome, everybody, to saying thank you. <laughs> I'll just say it right now. <laughs> and I see people are dropping. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, you may leave. It's no big deal. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I answered all the questions that I could. All right, well, have fun with Flipgrid. And if you have questions, just let me know.